Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts, the fastest growing gear site on the web. And today we're gonna uncreate the Scorpion XO XT9000. What's up, Speed Addicts fam? Before I jump in and give you the lowdown on the new XT9000, go ahead and subscribe to the Speed Addicts YouTube channel. That way you don't miss out on any of the latest gear reviews coming your way. Speed Addicts is always getting first look at brand new products. Don't miss out, subscribe right now. If you decide you'd like to purchase one of these XT9000s from us here at speedaddicts.com, we make that easy as well. There's a link in the description below. They'll get you right over to this helmet where you will be able to purchase or shop for any other parts or gear you might need for your next two wheel adventure. So this video is going live right at the end of February, 2023. This helmet's actually not quite uh, available for purchase. It is on the website and you can put in your email to get notified when it comes in stock. It actually won't be in stock in the United States until May. So we got about 60 days to wait. And I have to tell you, it's definitely worth the wait here. So this is the most technical adventure or dual sport helmet that Scorpion XO has ever made. Previously, they had the AT950, very popular helmet. It's an adventure helmet, which means it has, it's a technically a full face or a modular helmet with that motocross style peak on it. That's kind of what makes it dual sport or adventure. Now the AT950 was this format, but it was modular. So it had a flip up chin bar. That gives you some versatility, but there's also some drawbacks when it comes to noise and uh, air leaking and uh, also safety, right? A modular helmet with a flip up chin bar is never gonna give you that same sort of impact protection that a full face helmet will. So they're up in their game. They have the AT960 coming, uh, which is also modular, but this XT9000 is a big step up. It is full carbon fiber. This is 3K carbon fiber making it very nice and lightweight coming in at just about three and a half pounds, three pounds, eight ounces with the peak on, with the shield on. So that's pretty, pretty good when you're talking about the weight. It's also low profile, as you can see, just straight on. A lot of the other carbon helmets that we see from other manufacturers in that, in this adventure format, get really bulky really fast. And that kind of defeats the purpose of having a carbon fiber helmet, right? You want it to be light you want it to be low profile. So this helmet is also DOT and EC2206. Notice I didn't say 2205. This is built to the latest homologations out of Europe. It's that 2206 homologation. You're gonna see more of that over the next year or so as manufacturers are forced to update in Europe. What does that mean to you? Well, the 2206 is comprised of four drop tests instead of one like 2205. So there's literally four X the amount of testing that goes into these, they've really upped the game. And what that means to you is hopefully a safer helmet. So in addition to their standard drop test, they're now doing a low velocity, a high velocity, and an angular impact to see how well the helmets are dealing with that rotational energy management, okay? The shell is an intermediate oval fit. There's gonna be three shell sizes, which is great. It means you're not gonna be wearing too much helmet for your head. It also has the Scorpion XO patented air fit system. Okay, think Reebok pump, but for your cheek pads. Now, that's not meant to really change the size of the helmet that you're gonna take. It's just gonna allow you to inflate the, the cheek pads a bit. There's an air bladder in there and snug it up in your face. It's gonna be coming come in real handy when you get off road. You get into more technical trail riding with a helmet like this and you leave that pavement, you can go ahead and pump it up firm it up, you can actually put goggles on as well, and it makes it a very versatile helmet for that reason. As far as the fit and the sizes available, you're gonna see size extra small all the way up to three extra large, so uh, big heads like me, you're not left out of the equation there. The helmet's gonna run true, you're gonna wanna go by that Scorpion sizing chart, and you really should be in good shape. There's really no surprises with the fitment. Now, if you do have any issues though, you really should be buying your helmets at Speed Addicts because we offer no cost returns. All you have to do to qualify is live in the lower 48 states. Make sure the gear, the helmet, etc., is brand new in that original packaging. So just try it on the living room, watch some TV, try your helmet on for 20 or 30 minutes. See if you have any issues. If you do call us, if you don't, great, you're ready to ride, but uh, just make sure it's new and we'll get you that free return label in a couple of clicks. So exchanges, returns, very easy at Speed Addicts. Give us a shot and we'll make sure to treat you like family. Okay, let's jump in and do the full rundown. Now, before we get into all of the features, I just wanna say this helmet does MSRP for $499. So that is not inexpensive, but considering what you're getting, you're getting that latest uh, ECE 2206 homologation, you're getting 
a peak. You are getting an extra shield, a, a dark smoke shield in addition to the clear. You're getting that patented Scorpion um, air fit system and a full carbon fiber shell. So if I were one of those other brands where they have carbon ADV helmets going for closer to six, seven, eight, and even $900, I'd be a little nervous. I think Scorpion's bringing a lot to the table here and it's time to show you all about that. Okay, so let's start with the design. First off, it's just great looking, all this, the, the design work that they put into the shell, the curves, the angles, very dramatic, just a cool looking futuristic modern design, but they have left you room for that communication system right here, which was a smart thing. So it looks great right out of the box. Of course, 3K carbon with a gloss finish. Now, if you're taking this off-road and you're going through uh, tighter trails, know that any helmet with a clear coat like this can be buffed out with a rubbing compound that's clear coat safe. So if you scratch this up, I know it looks pretty out of the box. You can keep it looking shiny down the road. Okay, first up, the peak. Now, you notice the design. They have these large air gaps here. That's gonna allow airflow to go over the helmet at higher speeds without this helmet tugging on your head or pulling on your neck. Now, if you take a traditional motocross helmet and start ripping 50, 60 miles an hour, it's gonna pull a lot more than this XT9000 does. Now, there's only so much they can do with the design of a peak. Uh, you know, once you reach those 70, 80 miles per hour uh, highway speeds, you are probably gonna wanna remove this if you're taking longer rides because it is going to pull on you a little bit no matter how you cut it. Now, let me show you how you take this off. It's really easy to do. You're just gonna remove it with a couple of screws here. No tools required. And I'm gonna remove both sides, the left and the right. There we go. And then the center one is just a half turn and you can take this peak off. Now, because of the looks here, it's just a good looking helmet and the large eye port. I know some V-Twin guys are probably gonna be riding this. It's kinda of got that Street Fighter look. So I wouldn't pinch and hold this just as an adventure helmet. Anybody that's after a good um, good looking full carbon shell with all the latest features in that EC2206 might be interested in this XT9000. So if I put these screws back in place, we will be ready to ride. Now let's check out the ventilation with the peak out of the way. You will see those primary crown vents. And you notice they have got a ramp, a ramp to them, which makes them very easy to push. Here they've got a, it's kind of a wedge shape and it's got a couple of traction bars. So very easy to move. This is two position all the way on or all the way off and very solid. Gives you confidence here. Doesn't feel cheap. It actually feels like it is going to seal quite well. Down on the chin bar, you have a rocker style chin bar vent. That means you're gonna push down for that top to flip out and get a little bit more airflow through here. If you're going off road, more technical, you want more airflow, you're going to push this front end until it comes all the way off and you're gonna get maximum airflow in this position. Also included with the XT9000 is an extra camera mount that will go right here. I don't have one because this is a pre-release, but be assured that will come with your helmet. The angle is slightly pointed down. I'm told you might need to use um, an, like an elbow with your action camera to get in the right position or adjust the, your view in the app to uh, pull that up a little bit. So that is what that chin bar vent looks like. And you can just pop this back on and you're ready to go. Face shield, let's check out the face shield. So installed on the helmet, you're gonna get a clear pin lock ready face shield. In case you don't know, <clears throat> pin lock insert usually uh, can cost you upwards of 50 or 60 bucks when sold separately. Scorpion XO is gonna give you one in the box. This is also clear and is going to install on these posts on the inside of your face shield, creating a dual pane shield that's gonna reduce or mitigate fog. If you live in misty, foggy areas where fog is an issue, you're going to want to run that. Now, like I said before, also included in the box is a free dark smoke shield. Really cool that they do that. I mean, most folks do want a smoke shield of some sort, especially because there's no dropped down sun visor in the XT9000. So you can install the smoke and, uh, and you're good to go. One thing I noticed here, and uh, I'm not sure if this is gonna change in the future, but this is not pin lock prepped. I would like to see that so that you can have a fog solution for your smoke shield. Okay, let's move that out of the way and show you their face shield system. Now, like I said, there is no drop down sun shield. I actually like that personally. It's less moving parts. If you're riding this helmet in more technical situations, there's nothing bouncing around in there. The helmets with the drop down visors, you start bouncing around on single track on an adventure bike, uh, you're not gonna be stoked on that drop down visor. Sometimes they'll even deploy. And when they put a drop down sun visor inside of helmets, 
they have to remove some EPS, make room for that. So technically, from what I've heard, they don't crash test quite as well. So it's a safety thing as well. So they haven't gone with that drop down visor. They do have a new face shield mechanism. So you notice they're coming out away from the helmet instead of putting a mechanism inside of the helmet. That's another thing when it comes to safety, putting a recess in the shelf, getting it closer to your head, bad. So they've moved out. That has to do with that new EC2206 standard, move it away from your head. And it also helps them keep the shell low profile so you don't look like Jack in the Box, okay? Um, now, when it comes to removing a face shield on an XT9000, they have an all, all new mechanism. They're also using this on their new Covert FX helmet. And basically, how you do it, there's no tools required, there's no buttons to push. You're just gonna grab this thing and yank on it. Hold on, hold on. You do have to align these arrows. So there's an arrow on the face shield, probably hard to see there in the lights, and there's an arrow on the gear itself. Once those are aligned, you just pull this thing away from the helmet. Let's see how it goes. It takes a fair amount of force. Let's see, am I lined up? I'm lined up, pull, and that's it. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do the other side. Same difference here and the face shield off. Let's go back to the dark smoke. Same thing to put it on. You're just going to line up those arrows and push. And yes, you will get fingerprints all over your face shield. You're gonna have to wipe those off later, I'm sorry. There's no way around it. <clears throat> and it's just that easy, okay. That's what she looks like with the smoke. It's all murdered out. It's a good look. Like I told you, the V-Twin guys, you might be after this just because of the look of it and that giant eye port. Now, it does have a ratcheting system. There's a little ball bearing or a, a little tab that rides against this. You can hear it if I shut up for a minute. Here, let's hold it up. Okay, so there are they're not strong detents, but the shield will stay put in between the closed position and that open position. So if you're the type that likes to ride with a little bit of a crack, you can now <clears throat> this is just barely open yeah so you do kind of have a demiss setting and then you go up from there and the the lever is over here on your left side and on your right side so you pick however you want to open this the shields are quite thick they're sturdy they're high dollar they're optically correct like i said the clear is pin lock prepped so i like this new mechanism i like that it's moving the gears away from your helmet they're not recessing it it's a safer system, easy shield changes. I really like this quite a bit. I was a little nervous when I saw it, how that was gonna work out. <clears throat> Let's check out the back of the helmet. You do have two sets of passive vents, no wing lengths down low. You just have vents up um, around the top and then one further up. The EPS liner in this is also channeled. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So airflow should not be an issue. You cannot close off the rear airflow, but you can close off this front airflow. So cold weather might be all right. Let's flip this over. And we're gonna check out the inside on the XT9000. Okay, first up, you notice you have a chin curtain. Now this chin curtain has a little slit in it. It's not broken, don't worry. This is so that you can get your finger up in here and uh, pump up your air fit system. More on that in a second, but that's gonna allow you to inflate that bladder or deflate it with that button there. So that is your chin curtain. Emergency quickly use cheek pads in case EMS has to remove you from the helmet. Uh, in an emergency, they're gonna be able to pull the cheek pads out more delicately remove the helmet from your head. You do have some reflection here, a little added visibility as you're going down the road. Now they're using a double D ring closure, no quick releases like that. Like I told you, this is a technical helmet. Uh, they're not gonna mess around with that and no drop down sun visor. So makes it a good candidate for riders who are actually going to take this off road, those adventure riders. You notice these kind of matte finish, they're actually titanium, kind of cool. Um, okay, let's open this up and remove these cheek pads so you can see what's going on on the inside. All right, the cheek pads are part of the neck roll and they're gonna come out with a couple of snaps. There you go. They're using their quick wick liner, which is uh, moisture wicking antimicrobial. It's kind of got this uh, honeycomb print on it. It's good looking and it dries nice and fast. If you need to wash them, I recommend doing it in the sink, letting them air dry. And we're gonna pull this out of place. And you're gonna be able to see the air fit system. So you see that little bladder there. As I work this pump, that's gonna inflate. It's gonna give you a little bit of 
added fit in the face area. Again, this is not meant to make up sizes, only to get you a better fit. And typically, if you wanted that more technical racing fit, you'd have to buy a helmet with thick cheek pads, or you'd have to get thicker cheek pads out of the box. And that makes a helmet really a lot harder to put on your head, less comfortable getting in and out of. So this kind of solves that problem. You can have a more uh, comfortable fit out of the box, and then you can clamp it down if you're going to get a little bit more racy. Uh, there you go. So you see that is inflated now. Whoops, and we can pull this chin curtain out of the way and show you the button. So this will deflate that if you watch close. There you go, that is the air fit system, pretty cool. Let's remove the headliner here. You're also gonna see, with the headliner out of the way, the comm system pockets. So, they're not going with integrated comm system here. They figure you might wanna use whichever one you uh, have a liking or you already own one. So they're not forcing you to use their integrated comms. They have speaker pockets so you can install the comm unit of your choice. <clears throat> here is your comfort liner. You notice there's not a bunch of mesh or extra stuff here. It's gonna allow the airflow to get onto your scalp. A lot of other manufacturers, they start to dress up their headliners. There's too much foam. I think they get hot that way. So pretty minimalistic here. They're using this, uh, this wedge system instead of snaps in the temple area. So you shouldn't have any problems with hot spots here. And then a few snaps down low. So back to the speaker pockets. They went with 50 5 millimeter speaker pockets. That means it's going to be able to accommodate even the largest speakers. The ones uh, that are the largest I know of actually are, are probably the Pactock Black 44 mils. Those will fit in there no problem. So you don't have to worry about any issues with comm systems. And then you do have room. Here's the left side. You will be able to get a clamp style mount in between the shell and the EPS, no problem. You can also go with an adhesive mount. You're gonna wanna put that right here and you'll be dialed in with the comms. Okay, now with the liner out of the way, you will see their dual density EPS liner system. This is a low profile liner. It's not gonna sit up on your head too high and uh, look awkward. You notice there's channels and ports. It's part of the, um, not only are those like crumple zones essentially, but they also allow the ventilation system to really do its job here. Now, one of the coolest things about Scorpion XO, so they're gonna give you a five year warranty. You've got moving parts here. Obviously there are extra accessories. There's an air fit system. There's a peak, extra shields, all that sort of stuff. I like to see uh, a five year warranty if I'm gonna invest this sort of money in a helmet. So that is a nice touch. Now, if there's something I didn't cover in this video, I know there was a lot to go over. Don't worry, Rider Support is standing by over at speedaddicts.com. Yes, you can always talk to a human over there through phone, live chat, or email. And if you've already got one of these, or you're gonna get one of these soon, let us know how you like it in the comment section below. Don't just take my word for it. Appreciate y'all for watching. We'll see you next time to find out what's in the crate.